What's going on today everybody? So I'm back at it again. It's been a long time coming. I know I've been neglecting this project, but it's finally time to actually start on these taillights again. I'm tired of looking at them. I want to get them done and I've hit so many roadblocks that I think I've kind of figured out a way to go around them and the ones that I haven't, I'm just going to bulldoze through and try to figure them out as we go. So haven't been have not been satisfied with the quality of these OEM lights. If you can tell when you tilt it a certain way, all those little shiny shimmeries are cracks. They're cracks within the actual lens and you can see them. You can, it does, the camera doesn't pick it up as well as actually seeing them in person, but they're, they're a no-go. So, my game plan forward is to actually go ahead and remake the plastics. That's going to be a problem in itself because I don't know how to do it. I've got no experience with it. I'm going to do a bunch of research on it. But first things first, got to figure out a way to actually make a mold of what the actual plastic is. So I think I'm going to go ahead and try to do fiberglass. And I have a pretty ready amount of... Uh, cement around so I might do a backing of cement to make it a hard but the whole goal is to do a little vacuum form of these new of these old OEM uh, tail lights so I can get a new clear I think plexiglass or acrylic depending on which one's better for what I know one's super UV resistant and one is not very UV resistant um, and one shatters a whole lot but I don't want them to yellow, I want them to be flat, and I want them to be clear, as clear as I can get them. So I can never really quite get off these little ridges that are actually in here. Now the ones in the center, those ones came out completely fine. It's all smooth, it's all fine that way, but I don't really know what to do with this, this little edge right here. I don't know what to do with this edge and then if you can see just down in there that it's got ridges going down the whole outside and then it's got a pretty complex curve in there to try to sand so I think my best bet is going to be to just try to remake these the best that I can these inner ones are going to be pretty simple because they're pretty flat and these outer ones are going to be a little more involved, especially because it's got a couple bumps in it. So we'll see how it works out, but I definitely want to go ahead and abandon these these ones and make some new, probably molds so I can make multiple and maybe I'll start making these down the road. Who knows? Don't know for now. We'll see how well this turns out for me. But first things first, I want to remake these, see how good I can actually do it and try to vacuum form those the best that I can. So starting this project, I'm gonna go ahead and use some fiberglass. I think that's gonna be the best method. Do some, do a fiberglass uh, outside. That way it'll give me the cleanest uh, overall appearance. But first, I wanna tape off all the tail lights so no resin gets stuck to the actual um, lens itself. And then I'll go ahead and put a good couple coats of wax over the top of it to help act as a mold release. It's a little DIYer cheap trick it doesn't work as good as mold release that's for sure but i don't have any here so i'm going to use uh, wax to help um, separate the two done it before it seems to work pretty okay but i want to go ahead and start getting this on the on the move i want to start getting them done so without further ado let's start mixing up well let's get these taped off so then we can start mixing up some fiberglass or some resin and then we can lay some fiberglass and hopefully make a pretty quality mold out of these. I'm going to lay like six or seven layers on it. I haven't quite decided yet. And if I need to, I can always add more, but that's going to be a good jumping off point, getting a good solid base on it. So without further ado, let's uh, get to making these. There we go. We should have everything we need. We're going to start off with the tape, move to the wax, and then go into the resin and fiberglass. So I don't have actual paste wax. I thought I had some more, but paste wax works better. But this is what I have on hand. So we'll use that. So first things first, we'll start taping these up. I think I'm going to start with the easy ones first and then move on to more complex ones. I've got a couple different sizes. 
thicknesses of tapes. So we'll see which one works better. But I think that the big one's gonna work better on these small ones and then we'll see how well it works on these bigger ones. But I just noticed that there's some dust on these so we'll go ahead and clean those off so the tape will actually stick and move on from there. So now I've got all four of them wrapped and I've got uh, about three, three and a half coats. Some of them have four, some of them have three. Coats of wax on top of it. I've let them dry. I've buffed it off. The wax kind of made the um, paper, or the paper, the tape, act a little funny where it was starting to bubble up, especially on like this hard corner right here. You can see it's still kind of bubbling up. So. I might take the heat gun to it and try to get it to flex a little bit or stick a little bit better before I go and put some resin on this. But now I'm gonna go ahead and cut some fiberglass mats so it'll go over this and kind of get an idea on how I wanna do this, where I wanna go with it, and uh, start mixing up some resin and get it start to tack on the, on the uh, actual tape itself so that way the resin will act as the smooth part of the mold if that makes sense so we'll put a couple of layers of resin on there let it tack up put it or put a layer of resin let it tack up put another layer of resin and then once that starts to tack up we'll start putting some actual mat down so when you're going ahead and cutting fiberglass mainly it's carbon fiber is the bigger problem but fiberglass is the same you you can use your standard household scissors that have just a straight edge, but they don't work that great. So what is actually supposed to be used on them is a set of um, like carbon fiber uh, actual scissors. Now these scissors have little teeth on them. See, you can kind of see, but this one has definitely has ridges for little teeth. Now, the purpose of that is actually because when you go to cut with these scissors, or your standard household scissors, it actually will push the material as you're cutting. It will push it down the scissor. Now, with the teeth, it actually grabs and makes sure that it cuts in that little area. It's like a whole bunch of little scissors at once. So... Definitely helpful to have a set of uh, scissors that have the little teeth in it. Makes it a lot easier and I'll kind of show, I might show you different, well I will. I'll show you the difference between the two. So here's the seam that I just cut. Now up to about here, this is cut with the standard scissors. And you can see how it's kind of got a little jagged area. Um, not quite cut right now this is the one that i just cut with the nicer scissors you can see how it's nice and straight there's no pulling of the fibers and actually having them come apart on you and having steps now this already has some kind of seams going down it and it actually is working out pretty good for about what i want for my placement on the outside of these um tail lights so I've got them mocked up, kind of see how big I want my mat. I definitely want it to overlap a little bit, 
But if you're ever needing a straight line, you can take one of the actual little frills and pull on it. To give you a nice clean line going down the carbon fiber. Now that does two things. It gives you a nice line, but it also tells you where you're going. So you're not cutting like when it comes from the, how it came from the factory, how it's got some, it's cut kind of sideways. And if I go ahead and pull these ones out, they're actually going further into the cut than it was down here at the bottom. So that will keep you straight, going straight along the mat and not making sure you're not crossing over and cutting into those other areas because the less frills on the side you can have like this the easier it's going to be because those won't stick to your gloves won't fold over cause problems later on so definitely worth it to take the time and pull one maybe even another one next to it to make sure that you've got that nice clean line so i've got all of my fiberglass now cut for each section of these pieces i've got my outers and then the two inners those are all set up and cut it's actually getting a little bit too cold right now for me to get this um, resin to harden up so i'm gonna wait until the morning to where the temperatures come up a little bit so hopefully it'll actually work off if not i'll put probably an extra drop maybe even two of the hardener in it to make it work off a little bit faster but i'm gonna call it a night uh and I will pick this back up in the morning. One thing I will um, say is if you're working with fiberglass, definitely wear long sleeves and definitely wear gloves because you will be itchy for sure. And leave those preferably if you have a place in the garage. I leave mine in the garage and then throw the gloves away and then immediately go take a shower because this stuff sucks when you get it on you. If you don't want to wear a long sleeve if it's the middle of summer, get some baby powder. Baby powder will actually clog the pores in your, if you put it on your arms, it'll clog the pores so that fiberglass won't actually get in it and it makes it a lot easier to get off or a lot less itchy than if you don't have anything. Two tips. So without further ado, I'm gonna call it a night and we will pick this back up in the morning. So I went ahead and got everything already kind of set up and ready to go. I've got a can here that I'm going to use for my resin. Going to mix it up and get a, a little thick thickening coat or the base coat of the resin actually on the lenses. And then we'll go ahead and throw some fiberglass on it. So we'll start out with getting a couple coats of a resin on there by itself. Let it harden up, tack, it, tack uh, and then we'll move on to actually putting fiberglass on the parts. So I got to thinking about how I'm going to actually put the fiberglass over these taillights to actually make a mold. And when I want to make that mold, I'm going to need the sides to have a skirt or to come actually straight down. So I, ha I know where I need to cut the, the 
um, new plexiglass or uh, acrylic, whatever I decide. So, I think that this is going to be it. I think I've got an idea on how I want to actually make that, but I definitely need something so when I go to put around the sides, it's not just draped around the sides and doing whatever it wants. I'll actually have to make a form or something that this will actually stick around or that I can actually stick that fiberglass to when I mold it from the flat side for the plexiglass and then come down. That way I have a nice clean area to cut and I know I've got a line on where I need to cut everything. So I think this is gonna be on hold for a minute. I wanna get that and try that and I think that's gonna work a little bit better for me in the long run because I wanna make a mold that's I think a positive mold, so where it's got a bump and I'll pull the plexiglass over because I don't have any other way of of really sucking it down in. And that way when I pull it over, the majority of the um, plexiglass will stay the same thickness. If I go ahead and suck it in, it's, it has a tendency to make it really, th really thin in the middle. So we'll see, um, but that's how I think I wanna go about this. So I'm gonna think on that a little bit longer and probably call it a night on these. So check back with me on the next video. We'll see how we actually plan on doing this. Take it easy, everyone. Peace.